So since the beginning of the world, when when the world was created, the Lord created darkness and light. He said divided. He said separate dark. I mean separate dark from light. Um, the separation that the Lord have the separation that the Lord have for his people. He wants to bring people back to light. Because darkness cannot comprehend with light. Darkness cannot cannot comprehend with light. So Jesus Christ is the light and he makes his people light. He makes his people like of the world. And if you are born again, you are a represent are a representative of Jesus. If you are pursuing Jesus, if you are obeying Jesus, if you are listening to the voice of God and obeying the voice of God and you are being transformed you are being transformed into his light Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5 he said we are the light of the world we are the light of the world and he also came to confront darkness he come he came to confront the darkness in man in man's hearts in man's minds because man is fully capable of doing evil outside of Jesus we are fully capable no matter what you think no matter what you believe no matter what how how you you believe that life goes you are fully capable of doing evil and you will do evil outside of Jesus amen that's why we have to be born again that's why we have to repent of our sins and we have to uh, accept Jesus we have to confess our sins and uh, be born again of the water and of the spirit so that the Lord can light us as a candle uh, because he wants us to be shown. Uh, once we're born again, born into his family, he wants to show us off. He wants, uh, as the word of God says, he says that uh, he wants our lights to shine, to shine before men so that it glorifies him. He wants our good works to show. So as it says in the beginning, he did divide the light from the darkness. Um, but if you read in John chapter 3, there's a conversation that uh, Nicodemus is having with Jesus. And it's interesting that he approaches him in the nighttime. And he begins to ask Jesus all of these questions. And then Jesus says to him, he said, Art thou not a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? So Jesus confronts the darkness. Jesus confronts the fact that we, in our lives of sin, we have embraced darkness. We have, uh, we have attracted darkness, we've embraced darkness, we've celebrated darkness, and we uh, have uh, really found a place of safety and a, fa a place of, of fulfillment in darkness. So Jesus has to come to confront our mentality. He has to confront the condition of our heart, to purify our heart. He has to transform our minds so that we can step into uh, the will of God for our lives. But if we continue to entertain darkness, uh, we find ourselves separated from God. And it talks about that in Proverbs chapter 8. And it says that uh, through, a, through desire, a man uh, will separate himself. And then when he separates himself, he begins to intermeddle with all, all wisdom. So when we separate ourselves from Jesus, or we refuse to accept Jesus, if he's calling us, he's speaking to us through his people, he's speaking to us through just his goodness, his grace, his mercy that he's allowing us to experience and we refuse to respond to that by accepting him, by re repenting, confessing of our sins and being water baptized. That means actually being submerged into the water, approaching him how the Ethiopian eunuch did when he said, uh, there's water. He said, there's water here. What is stopping me from being baptized? When we come to Jesus in that way, showing that we are, we are desiring him, we want to leave our life of darkness, bondage, and misery, and we want to accept him into our lives so he, by his spirit, can lead us and fill us with his love, with his truth, and the grace, the mercy is, a, is available for us that allows us to step into the light and be led by the light of Jesus. Yeah, because if you want to continue in Jesus you have to be separated from culture you have to be separated from the world because the world is full of evil 
people thoughts, people imaginations does not benefit because it does not come from Jesus. They man's thoughts is vain. Man thoughts belief system is vain. So Jesus Christ come to change man hearts and minds because if he don't we'll will continue to be separated from him. So Jesus Christ knows that man love darkness rather than light. He addresses this in John chapter 3. He said man man's will not come to him because they love darkness. And he come to confront the darkness in our hearts. He come to confront the darkness in our minds. He tell us that hey, if you fornicate, having sex before a marriage is bad. If you smoke, if you game bang, if you indulge in ungodly things, watch ungodly television, it pollutes you. But in your mind, you like, no, no, I don't. I can do this and still have God. I can do this and still follow God. But the more that you listen to ungodly things, the more that you are being um, damaged and you, you're, you are, um, the voice of God won't be clear to you because you'll be listening to other voices. You'll be listening to other things that God do not want you to listen to. So in Revelation, the Lord was addressing the fact, he said, come from out, come out from among them, my people, and be you separate, and touch not an unclean thing. So God is calling his people to not indulge in worldliness. God is calling his people not to indulge in um, pornography or homosexuality. Some of us Profess Jesus and we still think the homosexuals are safe. No. If they do not repent, they are going to hell. If you do not repent, you are going to hell. It doesn't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter if you have a master's degree. It doesn't matter how nice of a car you have. It doesn't matter how nice of a house you have. If you do not have Jesus and you do not be separated and you do not come to him from your worldliness, you will not make it to heaven because the devil already knows. The devil already knows. He already knows that if you do not commit to Jesus, he run your life. He can just be in the background and have you living life as you think life goes. You might think because you have the house, you might think because you have the car, that you are a good person. But if you do not accept Jesus, it doesn't matter what you have on the outside, if you die in that state, you will not make it to heaven. So Jesus Christ is calling you to be, you, be separate, come. From out from among this world come from out from among culture and follow him and serve him so you can live eternity with him God have blessings for the righteous and have and God have curses for the disobedient so if you want to live life based on what you think life is you are going to fail and pain and suffering is going to be your result in this life and in the afterlife to come. In the afterlife to come, if you do not receive Jesus, if you do not die in the faith, you will go to hell. So Jesus Christ wants you to surrender your heart to him so you can serve him in righteousness, so you can serve him in holiness, and so you can represent him on earth. Jesus Christ definitely calling people to repentance. He's definitely calling this nation to repentance. If you do not repent, from your sins, if you do not be water baptized and you have the, the opportunity to do it, if you do not get filled with God's spirit, you have the opportunity opportunity to, to get, get filled with God's spirit and you do not want to do that, it's because you are stubborn and you are disobedient. So if you make a decision to want to live this life outside of Jesus, you are going to miss out on eternity. Amen. Word of God says that the light of the body is the eye. So what's what you're what you're watching, what you're entertaining, what you um, are looking at is it, it, it does have the ability to affect your heart. It has the ability to affect your mind, and it affects your soul. And your soul is affecting your life, the decisions that you make, the things that you embrace, the things you enjoy, the things your your um, your mindset, your decisions, your thought processes. All of that is affected by your eye. So when the Lord begins to transform you, as it says that uh, only the pure in heart can see him. So as he purifies your heart, he begins to fill you with his light, then you begin to love that which is holy and that which is righteous. And you begin to abandon and divorce yourself from the love of the world. 
It says in uh, Psalms 101 to set no wicked thing before your eyes. And it says neither, and, he, and then he goes on to say, neither will I let it cleave to me. So when you set things on your, when you, you, when you consciously, or even in some instances unconsciously set your eyes on things, it does have the ability to cleave to you. It does have the ability to affect your life, to affect how you look at God, to affect how you look at the people of God. When you are putting yourself in situations, you're placing yourself in environments where God is not being exalted, when God is not being glorified, his name is not being magnified, that puts you in the direct fire of the enemy, that puts you in the position to be vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy, to the voice of the enemy. His voice gets a little bit louder, a little bit more clear, and it sounds a little bit more enticing when you are not being mindful of what you are watching and what you are partaking in. It's very important that you realize that the light of the body is the eye. So we really have to make sure that we are seeking the Lord. I keep our eyes and our focus on the Lord. Failure to do that leaves us, leaves us in a position to where the enemy is getting uh, the, he has the ability to, to influence us. He has the ability to manipulate us because that's what he's doing. He manipulates you and makes you think what's, what's good, what's bad for you is really good for you. Having sex, mm -hmm. promiscuous sex mm -hmm. is good for you. Drugs is good for you because it makes you feel good. Uh, entering, uh, glorifying and, and honoring relationships more than you honor him makes you feel good. All the things that the Lord tells you to steer clear from and stay away from, the enemy is whispering to you, telling you that it's good. He wants to position you to make decisions to where if you make that decision, it's going to give you a little bit more pleasure. It's mm -hmm. going to give you a little bit more satisfaction. It's going to give you a little bit more wisdom. Yeah, Eve, if you, if you, if you take a bite of that, take a bite of that, then you will be able to see. You will have knowledge. You will be able to know. When Eve made that decision, what that did was that now made man have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. The word of God says that when, when God created everything, everything was good. Mm -hmm. When man made the decision to listen to the devil, consent to what he said, and actually act on what he told them to do, what that did was that put us in a position that now we are faced with, now we are aware of light and darkness. But although we are aware of light of darkness, we're not, we're not aware of how the darkness is impairing our ability to see. Because there's so many things that we can get our hands on. There's so many things that we can, we can grab a hold of that we think is fulfilling, that is bringing fulfillment. That we think is really taking us the place that we want to go in life. Because whether or not you want to believe this, it is true and it needs to be said. Your decisions are leading you to a destination. You want that destination to be eternal life. And that's why we're on here speaking to you because you need to start preparing yourself now. Every time you make a decision, when a celebrity dies and you and you idolize them, so you, you share them on your Facebook or you, you go and watch a whole bunch of memories and highlights of them, what you're doing is you're telling the Lord that you still want to entertain the world. You still want to pay attention to what the world is doing. As a believer in Christ or even outside of Christ, when the Lord is ministering to you and the Lord is starting to bring you closer to him, he's drawing near to you and he wants you to respond to that by drawing near to him. And you are spending your time looking at ungodly things, talking with ungodly people. The word of God says that to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So as sons and daughters of God, we are, we are called to confront the darkness. We are, we are called to bring people out of the darkness and show them the light which jesus christ is the light of the world yeah and he shared that light with his people he shared that light with his sons and his daughters Amen. and um one of the things that we have to know that the life is good and it's evil it's good people and bad people you might consider yourself a good person like i was listening to a conversation somewhere and this person was saying that this person was good because of this person giving to them what they need even though this person cuts even though this person go to strip clubs even though this person indulge in ungodly things and so I was considering and I was thinking about that men think that 
some people think that people are good because they benefit them in a physical sense even though they might be rebelling against God no that's not good good is when you obey Jesus when you follow Jesus when you commit to him and he's changing your heart and your mind to love him first and to love his people so you have people in the world who believe that they are good people believe that because they give to charity because they do this because they pay somebody bill but yet outside of that they in total rebellion towards Jesus they hate him they live in ungodly ways they act in ungodly ways they talk about ungodly things and they and they love the satisfaction of it but Jesus is confronting that he said that to love the world if, if you love the world you are an enemy against him you don't you don't have to believe that but to make yourself an enemy with God if you are loving the things that God do not love God hate things God hate ungodliness but you know something special about God if you commit to him and you surrender your heart to him and you confess your sins and you want to change he can purify your mentality he can purify your beliefs he can purify your heart like my brother mentioned the pure heart will see God I cannot purify my own heart I have to go to him so he can make me new so he can change the way that I think and he can deliver me from the powers of the world from the powers of darkness and when he deliver me he expect things from me so God do not deliver us this is deliver us God do not bring freedom to us just to bring freedom he tell us to come to him he changed us so we can help bring change to other people and so if you want to live in ways that God hates and that God despises the nature the creation the, the 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 moon the the planet the earth is going to respond to you i was i was reading the um, scripture in job it says that the heavens will testify of your iniquities and the earth will rise up against you why because you are living in sin and, and creation is going to respond to you based on how you make how you live in this life based on your decisions Cain was a perfect example of that. Cain murdered his brother because God was not respecting his lifestyle. And so he decided to make a decision to kill his brother out of envy, out of hatred, out of jealousy. And the earth, God said that God allowed the earth to respond to his decision and God responded to his decision. And you know what? In 1 John, the Bible called him the wicked one. He was of the wicked one. So he was classified in God's eyes as a wicked person because of his sinful act. And you know what? Cain, he had a family. He had a family line. And God wiped him out, even though he was still living in sin. So it's very possible to have a family and still be wicked in God's eyes. You can say that, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm blessed. I, I, I have this. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. It's many people who live in ungodly ways and think that they are going to heaven. Think because they have money in the bank. Think because they have people, people attention. They think they're going to heaven. No. If you do not have the creator attention, if you do not have if you do not have his full attention, and you if you do not obey him and commit to him, you don't have anything. Amen. And like you mentioned with Cain, uh, something interesting when you compare the lives of Cain and Abel. Cain is the prime example of the fact that you cannot give God what you want. You have to give God what he, what he told you that he desires from you. You, cannot get, you can't create something for God, meaning you can't go uh, create your own life path. And, and feel like it's acceptable to God. You know, God has a specific way that he wants you to live your life, and he needs to show you how to do that by his spirit. He needs to show you how to do that by you having an actual relationship with him. Cain is the example of what you will do when you don't have a real relationship with God and when you are full of pride and you feel that God doesn't have any place in your life to give you any type of direction. There's nothing, there's no type of correction, there's no 
transforming of your mind, healing of your heart. There's no sanctification that you need to go through. I can just work really hard and just be really awesome and be really smart and do really well in life. And I can give God that and God will respond to that by saying that's acceptable. But no, we have to go through Jesus to be acceptable to God. That's why we have to repent so that all of that past stuff that we did can be blotted out and we can have a refreshing in the presence of the Lord. We need to be refreshed. We need to be washed from the world, the influence of the world. We love the world. We thought that the world gave us identity. We thought that we were gonna find purpose, identity in the world, mm -hmm. and the world continued to let us down. Relationships, all of that stuff let us down. But I'm here to tell you today, when you, when you confess of your sins and you accept Jesus Christ into your life, he will show you how to live in a way that's pleasing and fulfilling and satisfying. There's no better place to be than in the presence of the Lord. And when you accept him into your life, he will, he will convince you. He will woo you to the degree that you believe that. He will make you a believer of the fact that he is for you and that he does have uh, what you're looking for, which is eternal life, which is peace, which is joy, peace that surpasses all understanding. You need to acknowledge that you are outside of God. You can learn a lot of things. You can go figure out things. You can read books. You can go get a degree. You can go do all of these things and figure out how to better figure out man. But if you don't ever figure out God, if you don't ever accept God into your life, you are in a world that has no fulfillment. You are in a world that has nothing to offer you but misery and pain and suffering. And like my brother said, you can be like Cain and have a family you can do very well and still not have God. He said to be, a, like my brother said, as Binka says it in James, to be a, be a friendship with the world is to be an enemy with God. So if I accept the world, I embrace the culture, I embrace everything that God is trying to deliver me from that separates me from God. And I'm gonna find myself isolated, confused, empty. You're gonna be void void of happiness, void of truth, void of understanding, void of wisdom. And then when you're void of those things, it's because you're trying to avoid God. You're trying to avoid God and you're trying to find something to take the place of God. That's why we, we, we take on lives of sin because what we're really looking for is God. And God has to continue to, throughout our lives, convince us and try to bring us into that. He has to really show us that our lives of sin is damaging our lives of sin is not doing it's not benefiting us in any way but the only way you can truly accept that and truly walk in the promises of god the, the will of god for your life is you have to accept jesus christ he said he's the way the truth and the life no man can come unto the father god but through him. and there's blessings when you separate yourself and you commit to god god healed my heart he healed my brother heart and he brought deliverance and i'm not only talking about the physical blessings i'm talking about the spiritual blessing because the spiritual blessings are more important than the physical blessings yes god do provide for us financially yes god do provide for us yeah financially and with the things of this world but he also provide for us spiritually making us more healthy making us more aware of his voice making us more aware of his words making us more aware of his will and make us more sensitive to him and when we want to go outside of that and want to gain this world because the bible jesus said that what is what what, what shall a man gain the whole world and to lose his own soul so it's it's very possible for you to gain a lot of physical things and in the and in that still die in sin but it's not God's will that any man should perish. That's why we have to commit to him and commit to a church. Amen. Because a lot of people reject the church. A lot of people despise the church because due to bad experiences, what they heard, what they see. But God do have faithful and true churches that's led by the spirit of God. That's led by the man of God. That's, that's led by his spirit. So God speak to men and he speak to man so man can speak for him and a lot of us neglect that because of hurt and because of 
of us willingness not to want to commit to church or the church is not a building but I don't even want to get to that right now but yeah, that's another topic so if we commit to the order of God and we submit to him and only way you can have power over this world only way you can have power over your sinful condition if you can if, if, if for you to submit to Jesus outside of that you're not capable of overcoming the world because the devil is going to run your life because once we obey God we have power over the devil because greater is within us than he that's in this world because God's spirit is filling us he's overcoming the devil by giving us the power to overcome the devil because he the devil is way more smarter way more clever he's been here for centuries of years he's seen people come and go he's seen people come and go so we have to submit to, to Jesus to order to survive in this world unless the world is going to crush you unless this is, um, the, the, the culture the, the, the creation is going to um, crush you God can give you power over creation we see that throughout the Bible he gave Elijah power over creation Jesus Christ demonstrated that in the New Testament when he stopped the rain. God can give his sons and daughters power to stop creation, to have creation, to function the way that he wanted to function. Because the, the earth, the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. So when we depart from this world and we commit to Jesus, we are telling the Lord and we are sincere we really want to follow him I'm not talking to those of us who just want Jesus and just want to have him in our pockets meaning that we just want God to pay our bills or we want God to give us out this situation but we still want to live in sin after he does I'm not talking to people like that and if you are that person you need you need to, to re, you need to repent and you need to submit to Jesus because submitting to Jesus will grant you access to him and he would he would know how to direct you in life. He will send you to a godly church if you are sincere and genuinely. He will send you to a church that's after his heart because you cannot function outside of the church. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how much you hear from God. It doesn't matter how much dreams and visions you have. It doesn't matter how many people clap your hands or appreciate you. If you do not commit to Jesus and you do not commit to his church, eventually you're going to fall out and the devil is going to run your life. So, when we obey Jesus and we and we commit to church and we start to obey godly leadership, God will prosper us. God will prosper us. And when we forsake the things of this world, he will give us access to him. He will give us access to him. Amen. Amen. The Lord wants to call us out of the world. He told us to be, be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. But the only way that we can be overcomers of the world like Jesus is we have to submit our lives to Jesus. He gives us his spirit. He says that the Holy Ghost teaches us all things. We can, we can go and, and try to find shortcuts and, and try other ways to find what we need to get to God. But Jesus is the only way to get to God. Jesus is the only way to overcome this world that is trying to get your attention. Understand everything, there's these phones, these devices, people that don't love God, everybody is wanting your attention. You would be surprised nowadays to see what people would do for your attention. What people would do. People will sell their souls for attention. And I pray that none of you on here that are watching are listening to those type of people. I pray that you abandon that world and that life, that 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 type of uh, mentality that the people are are, are, are under, are, that are saying that they want, they would rather have attention. If I get attention, then that means that God is affirming me. If people are paying attention, paying attention to me. If people like me, if people want to uh, wear my clothes, if people want to come to my parties, if people want to uh, celebrate me and lift me up, then that means that God. Is affirming me and that's false that's false that's deceitfulness and that's falsehood to think that because people are celebrating you that God is pleasing and God God is pleased and acceptable with your lifestyle the only way that your lifestyle would be acceptable is if you are living 
by the Spirit of God and you have accepted Jesus into your life and you are striving to be holy because the Word of God said, Jesus said, be ye holy as I am holy. Jesus wants us to be one with him and the Father as he wants us to be one with each other. It says that in John chapter 7 when Jesus was praying to the Father, John chapter 17. And he says, Lord, I pray not for the world, but for those that you have given me. He said, I want them to be one as you and I are one. So when you come into the house of God and you, you desire to, to come together with the believers and to be strengthened, to be encouraged, to be edified, what that does is that avails a level of strength that you can only get from God. You have to understand that you cannot get to heaven on your own. You cannot get to heaven on your own. You cannot receive the light of Jesus Christ and walk in that light and that light be a benefit in your life outside of Jesus Christ, outside of the structure uh, that Jesus Christ has for the church. He said we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves, the assembling, the coming together. Because if we forsake that, we're, we're leaving, our, we're alone. We're alone and when you're alone, you are vulnerable. You are open. You are easier, you are an easy target for the enemy to get to when you are alone. So you have to understand that as, as we are getting prepared for the return of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is wanting to strengthen the believers. He's wanting, wanting the believers to be unified. He's wanting us to be stable. He wants us to be sound of mind. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We need everything that the Spirit of God has available for us because you have to understand that when you are living a life of sin, there's a, there's a spiritual atmosphere, there's a spiritual activity that's going on that you don't see. So when you are living a life of sin, every time that you partake in sinful things, you're in sinful environments, and that's something that you are constantly frequenting, you are willingly going into sinful environments that leaves you in a place to where the enemy is. Uh, influencing your life he can potentially control your life so when the when the Lord starts uh, wanting to to uh, enter into a relationship with you and he starts bringing people such as me or my brother or whoever he positions in your life to talk to you and you wonder why you can't you can't respond to that in obedience you can't respond to that in wanting to accept Jesus Christ it's because of the things that you are doing behind closed doors it's because of the lifestyle that you're living you're still stuck in darkness. And you have to understand that in, it, it, in what is the word of God says? It says that uh, it talks about the, the works of the flesh. And what the works of the flesh does is that gives the power to the enemy. Um, so, yeah, because like my brother was mentioning how that the work of like when you are governed by your flesh, when you are governed by your own desires, when you are, or when you are governed by your own emotions, you are going to react in the emotions mm -hmm. and the spirit of god does give you power over your emotions when you yield to him now when you seek him because we need daily seeking of the lord we need daily we need the daily presence of the lord according to god's will for your life um because it's like it's like when you take a shower you need to take showers every single day for those of us who do this you know for those of us who take showers every single day but um so we need to take showers every single day because we need to be cleansed and we need to be clean so it's like we need the presence of god to abstain us we need the presence of god to withhold us moses said lord i'm not going without your presence because if you are doing things in the presence of god it's not filling you. You are eventually going to react in your emotions. You are eventually going to be controlled by, by the world, by the powers of this world. The devil hates you. The demons hate you. Your flesh hates you. Your heart telling you to do things that you should not do. And the Spirit of God loves you. And he wants you to yield to him so you can behave and so you can act like him because it pleased God and it rep and it shows that God is working through man when you are represent him according to his will when God see you because he will honor you the Bible um the God came to Eli and told Eli that those who honor those who honor God God will honor it. those who despise God they will be likely to esteem 
So God do place honor on man. He do place honor when we honor him. And when we do things that pleasing in his sight. And he will despise you if you make him a, a fool. If you do not confront sin. If you agree with sin and you want to live in sin. And you want to disobey him. Without repentance, he's going to cause you pain. He's going to cause you suffering. Because he wants you to represent him. He wants you to represent him. Amen. Amen. And as you um, submit your life to the Lord and he positions you to represent him, there are certain things that he wants you to do to make sure that you are representing him in the proper way. He wants you to read the word of God. He wants you to spend time praying praying to him, communing with him, talking with him. He wants you to spend time worshiping him because when you refuse to approach God, refuse to spend time with God, then you are left to all of that, that stuff that you took in. The, all the activity, all of the busyness of the day is still on you, it's still in you. And then you'll get to a place to where you, you, you can get to a place to where you're afraid to approach God because you don't want to trust God with your problems. And the enemy will tell you that it's better to just hold on to your pain. Like the people of Israel, they said, they told Moses, they said, Moses, you go talk to God for us. We don't want God to talk to us. You go talk to God for us and then tell us what he said. And that's not, that's not the Lord's desire is to, uh, to have people separated from him. Um, he wants you to be able to approach him. He wants you to approach him so that you can obtain mercy. Approach the throne of grace. But there, you have to understand that once you have become born again, that you have to continue in the faith. In the way that you're going to stay strong, you're going to stay holy, you're going to obey the voice of God, the spirit of God, is you have to spend time reading the word of God. You have to spend time being sharpened by your brothers and your sisters in the faith, learning from them. You have to spend time, extensive time with God in prayer. Just as God begins to show you things, God will start to take you. He will start to allow you to revisit things in your life. And he will allow you to confront and start casting down certain things because he doesn't want, he wants his, his people to be holy. He wants us to be blameless. He wants us to be spotless. He wants us to be righteous. And the way that he is doing that is a constant uh, revisiting of him, a constant spending consistent time in his presence. We need to spend more time with the Lord. And you need to understand that uh, as the Lord is releasing the grace for you to get saved, you want to, if you are listening to this, you have made it this far, you want to respond to that. You want to, today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you need to repent. You need to be water baptized. And the Lord will fill you with the Spirit. And like my brother said, it's not just physical blessings, but now he gives you more wisdom. So now you can go get a higher paying job. And now you can impress some female that you want to impress. So now you can go and impress your family and, and you know, go talk to them however you want to talk to them but he wants he wants to give you spiritual power you have to understand there are there are there are demonic forces in this world that are working through people they are influencing people they are making people uh, submit to the devil system and you need to understand that people are obeying the devil and it's not like the word of God says it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against proofs, but against powers, against principalities, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's not the people. You have to understand the enemy. The enemy is the devil. The devil, like my brother was saying, the devil hates you. The devil does not love you. The devil does not have anything to offer you but hell and the lake of fire. And if you do not accept Jesus Christ, then you every day you make decisions to ignore God, you make decisions to ignore the people of God as he sends preachers, he sends people to talk to you and try to tell you that you need to accept Jesus. You continue to ignore that, you continue to, to be dismissive of that, then you are putting yourself in position to go to the very place where the devil and his angels were, and the angels are. And you don't want that. And you are, if you are outside, you have to understand, you are outside of Jesus right now. If you have not been born again, or if you're in a place where you have backslid and you are not currently walking in obedience, you are not in a current relationship with Jesus, you are being, the enemy has 
access to you. You need access to the Father, and that's to Jesus. That's the only way that you are going to have power to confront the sins. That's the only way that you're going to be healed, delivered, transformed. That's the only way. The only way you're going to be rescued from this world and the effects of this world and to have power over this world is through Jesus. That's the only way. That's the only way because Jesus is the truth, the life, and the, and the way. And no man can get to, to the Father unless you go by Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You have to go through Jesus. And he set people in this world so they can help you. If you're willing to humble yourself, he set the pastor, the prophet, the, the, uh, the evangelist, the, the, the apostle, the teacher. Why? Because he want to edify the body of Christ. We need shepherds. We need godly shepherds. But the question is this. When you get the godly shepherd, are you going to obey what the word of God is saying through him? So, when you obey what the word of God is saying, you're going to see the blessings of it. When you disobey the word of God, you are you're going to you're going to experience it, the manifestation of the curse. Mm -hmm. So either God's going to bless you or God is going to curse you. Yeah. And it's yeah. based on your decisions. It's based on what what you are doing. Because, you know, life is going to prove. God, life is going to prove whether you want to serve God or not. So. When we submit to God and we come from out from among this world and we want to follow him and live in righteousness and holiness, the blessings of God is going to be on your life. But if you want to live in sin and you want to still be lukewarm, the Lord is going to eventually cause you to make a decision. He's going to make you make a bad decision and he's going to vomit you out, out of his mouth. And unless we repent... We continue to repent. We continue to want to follow God. And we die in righteousness. We will, we will, we will make it to heaven. So, the Lord Jesus Christ love you. God is love. And it's a manifestation of his love that he created you so you can serve him. So you can follow him. So you can experience his goodness, not only in heaven, also in earth because God do um, inhabit his praise of his people. He do delight in the prosperity of his people. So God do want to fill you with his love, his power, his knowledge, his understanding. But you have to submit to him. And you have to refrain from watching worldliness and indulging in worldliness. But you first have to be baptized and get filled with his spirit so you can have power over your heart and your mind. Amen. So, this is your brother Corey. Your brother Anthony. God's willing to speak to you again.